Okay, <clears throat> I'd like to call the uh, Finance Committee to order. Uh, it is now 6.25. Okay, I'm going to pass out Here. I think there's enough. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> that was the first one. <clears throat> and this is something that, that Brenda did up last year and again this year. Uh, these are the actual revenues uh, for the last 10 years. Property tax, local receipts, state aid. It doesn't include, obviously, free cash. But. And so it only goes through 2019. We're in 2020, so we don't know what, obviously, what 2020 will have to uh, the actual figures for 2020 mm -hmm. uh, or the actual figures for 2021. So. These are projections just, and they're based on the, uh, and they're based on the actual dollars that came in. Um, so they do contain projections for, uh, so I'd like to spend a couple of minutes talking about those. As a general rule, uh, you can see the progression for property tax, uh, and I'm talking about not, not including the, the debt amounts for the time being, starting at about $7.5 million in 2010 and going to $10,800,000 in 2019. Those are actual dollars that were collected. Uh, local receipts, starting at, uh, in 2010, of 1.7 million, and going up to $2,250,000 in 2019, over 10 years. State aid, and this is the only part of this, this, this is the money that we have to use for, for budgets. There, there's other state aid school for the schools, for example, at uh, uh, school choice. Mm -hmm. It's in there. That's not included here. So in 2010, uh, just shy of 1.8 million, and it is declining. And so that last year or in 2019, we got a little less than 1.5 million. And you can see that basically it's going down every year. <clears throat> if you look at the projections, let me pass these out. Carolyn, Diana, I'm going to take a look at those. Thank you. Is there an extra one down there by any chance? I have, yeah. If you'd give that to uh, oh, the three. So, on page one, tax revenues a rough projection for 2020, the current year. Again, we're not we're not looking at debt here uh, of 11 million 141 thousand uh, for 2021, give or take. 11,500,000, that's the calculated projections. And essentially what you're seeing is a general increase of about $370,000 a year in tax revenues. Page two has Local receipts, and again, this is this is the these are the actual numbers. Uh, we do we do uh, 
withhold some of the local receipts. Uh, you, you can, if you take a look at FY16 and FY17, we were down to a little less than 1.9 million in FY16. And just over 2.4 million in FY17. So there's $600,000 or $500,000 difference. Uh, so we have to be careful with, with budgeting. And so we typically withhold half a million dollars, give or take, in, in local receipts when we put, we, we put our revenue projections together. But these are the actual. Um, so the projections for 2020, based on, on, on the actual figures for FY 2010 through FY 2019, we would expect somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.4 million. And in 2021, $2.5 million. The, the annual increase approximately averages out to about $81,000. Uh, on the next page. Skip? Yeah. Sure. I'm, I'm missing something. You said, we, you know, usually we're conservative with the local receipts. Yes. Soon of About a half million dollars. But on here it's only showing, like, for two, 2019, 65,000. Actually, the other way. There's, there's, there's nothing. We're not reducing any of this. These are the actual figures that came in, and based on those actual figures... Oh, these are the projections without we, the half without, million. Without the half million. And okay, you, if it. you All notice, right. uh, down below it says projected FY 2020. Then to the, to the right of that it says less 20%, less 25%. Mm -hmm. So those are approximately, you know, using those. Right. Okay. And <clears throat> Brenda will be more detailed with her projections that she comes up with or estimates that she comes up with. Um, so can you say again on the property tax, do you withhold anything? To the no. Oh. No. Okay. Cherry's sheet, the state aid figures, uh, again, these are going down on an annual basis by about thirty thousand dollars. How much of that is charter school kids? I don't know. Uh, well, it, I don't. It, it, it's increasing drastically. But uh, I, I can't give you yeah. the figures. But um, but fiscal year twenty even went quite a bit. Fiscal year nineteen went great as far as the cost. But they're not, they're not on the, uh, the charter schools aren't, aren't on the charter sheet. Uh, well, yeah, they are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It certainly doesn't help. No, I, I agree. So state aid in 2010, we had just shy of 1.8 million dollars in state aid that we could use in budget for the budget. Again, not including school choice, uh, and there's a small amount of library money that goes directly to the library, so that's not in there. And if there, there are a couple of other ones too. But in any event, in any event, 2010 we had a one point, just shy of 1.8 million. In 2019, the year just passed, we were on, we were below 1.5 million. So that's a that's a $350,000 loss over those 10 years. Mm -hmm. So the projections for the current year, again, that's about a $30,000. Well, it's even more than that. Uh, 100,000. 100, and then about 30,000 for 21. 
Now those, those again, those are projections, so what actually occurs is, and we actually, I think we actually have the numbers for 2020, don't we, for state aid? That, we do. Those, yeah. So we could compare those and you could take a look at those. But again, this was just to use, use projections. Yeah, it, uh, what comes through on the final charity yep. sheet isn't always exactly what you get or exactly what you charge because they find out after the fact about charter schools mm -hmm. and school choice. So some of those numbers change from what yeah. they say you're going to get. Those but those are those numbers are going to be a little more accurate than what we've got here. Because yeah. again, there we're we're bouncing out two years from the figures we had in 2019. And then you get grand totals on page four. Again, uh, in addition to so you have to add the debt exclusion to that. What was that about? Five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, close to five hundred. Uh, and then uh, sewer services, sewer receipts. So those aren't in there. I don't know if they're in the. They are not anymore. It's in, uh, they are not in this. Because yeah, because of our accounting for, for sewers. Okay. Any questions? Again, to stick this in the, the binders will be coming out shortly. Stick it in the binders. It's there for reference purposes. So this state aid is pretty much all the state aid that we get, excluding, as you said, school choice and a couple of very small. Right. So there's no additional funding for the school record? Uh, no, there isn't. No, that's that's We're included. actually losing aid as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're, we're really not sure what we're doing. Right. I think I think school choice this year is only five hundred thousand, and it's been much higher in the past. The number that isn't on this report it goes directly to the school. <coughs> is that because there's fewer kids choosing in, or they changed the? Um, no, there's fewer funding. fewer kids coming in. Mm -hmm. The school choice. And let's say we we joined the school choice program in the late 90s, 2000. I think it was the late 90s. And it was five thousand dollars per kid, uh, and it still is five thousand. The exception is if you end up with a youngster who has special needs, whatever those special needs cost, as I understand it, whatever they are, uh, are built back to the the district and we receive those from the state. The actual cost now though, educating per child is running approximately what? About 17. 15 for at the elementary level about 15. Right. So once again here we are at 5,000 from the creation and we're now up to roughly around 15 give or take per child. That's regular ed. Right, that's regular ed. That's nothing to do with special ed. No. We have a very high percentage of special ed. Makes you, yeah, well, makes you but think. But there's a, a wide bit. range in that special ed. Of course there is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some are just getting reading services and then others are right. full time. No question. Training, yeah. so I mean, there's, it's hard to, we can't really talk about that. Well, you, I mean, you can to the extent that. We have to cover it. As I understand it, if the parent of a special needs youngster asks that their student be school choice, when we, it's essentially essentially a lottery system where you're picking up a water with a number out of a hat. Uh, so if it happens to be a school choice student, that's, that's who comes. If it's I, I don't know. I have. I have to. I, I don't know what the latest is. I don't, I don't want to speculate. I don't know. What are we spending as far as above foundation for the education? One hundred sixty percent. One hundred seventy percent. Frontier. Pardon, Diane. Frontier is about that. Frontier is. I'm not sure about Deerfield. Frontier is about that. About one hundred sixty. Yeah, I think. I think Deerfield Elementary is just around one hundred. About 150% above foundation. Like well, 50% above foundation. So 50% above foundation. Right, well. Right. Or 150% right. above foundation, right. Of foundation. And, and it's a little bit higher at Frontier, but I'm not. Yes. 
There's a couple breakout um, sessions at the MMA conference that's going to deal with this stuff in the new formula. So we'll try to get more information and bring more information back on what the long-term impact might be financially. I mean, I, you know, I've been crazy about this for two years since we went to that initial meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I, just there was a surplus. Knows. There was a state surplus this year, so there's extra money coming out. So hopefully, we won't be as impacted. But you know, as soon as we have an, a, a recession, it's, the bottom's going to go out. So we, we somehow we've got to prepare ourselves for, even if we get the waiver for the 01342 zip code, and we get the, the zip codes straightened out. Waitley and us, you know, we take, you know, the 136 households of Waitley off of our mm -hmm. income. Then, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping to meet with Sean Brown and start that process. I mean, I've been complaining about it. It's just that there's multiple people that have complaints. So. I mean, multiple towns. <coughs> so they're not, you know, nobody's addressing anything yet. The, the impact is that we are considering, I don't know what percentage-wise, but one of the wealthier communities in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I, I mean, I've looked at those numbers, and I don't really remember. Was it in the top 20% of the top 20 towns or municipalities? Or well, I, there's, well there's, I think there's 336 households mm -hmm. in Waitley that add into our income but don't add into our population. So, you know, you're, that, that distorts our, that formula. And then we have the formula for 01342 zip code that has not all the nonprofits. And so, we, I mean, to me, it's a legitimate case that we can appeal our foundation budget. But unfortunately, there are probably 40 or 50 other towns that are also, also trying to appeal it right now. Mm -hmm. And they're all of us are getting less money. So mm -hmm. nobody really wants to listen to us that much. But when we go to Boston, you, you, Sean is the head of all this. And, and he is very, makes himself available. So I tend to meet with him and talk to him. And I've known Sean. him. Sean Cronin. And, and we've known him for years. He's working for the most dear deal. So, you know, hopefully he'll listen to our case. And we can just keep trying. What uh, direction did the select board give, or have you given the department yet as far as in relationship to budgets? As Absolutely far as the increase? same that we do every year, level services. Level services. Um, and, and try to look at, is there a way that we need to change our operation, or is there anything we know that we are faced with, like the transfer station, the recycling? That, you know, we have no control over that. That contract is going to go up no matter what. So that's, mm -hmm. we know about that. Right. But so we're just, you know, how you, like John's operation at the police department, he, you know, is really efficient and it does really good work. But is there anything he sees in the, in the um, down the road that he needs to change or we should be aware of or whatever. And, you know, just those kind of directions. Yeah, there, the, the caveat was level services unless you see a need or a, or a, a reason, and if so, then we need to explain what that might be to, to not have level yep. services. So, okay. so some justification if it needs to change. Exactly, right. If yep. there's a, any kind of big bond for what was going yeah. on. And obviously, like you said, the the transfer station is a prime example of that. 
Well, the recycling contract. Recycling. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It's, a, it's just a huge jump in cost, and there's nothing we can do about it. My, I, I'm not very, I'm not totally depressed about it because when we were at the MMA conference last year, they talked about facilities coming online within the next two or three years in New York and in New York, and then we'll have local. Um, but it, there's, a, there's a lag of two or three years, and so we're going to have this more expensive mm -hmm. whatever until we can get those facilities up. Well, obviously, I'm sure we'll hear an update because every single community in Massachusetts was going to be impacted. So it's <coughs> a big deal um, and big discussion. So, right. um, but it's, you know, instead of having, I mean, I think it's better instead of having overseas sending everything to China and it's now going to be local. And it's, and it's in <coughs> that need employment and, and need industry. So it, I think it's really great. And so I think everyone was seeing it as positive. Mm -hmm. And it would be, you know, it would be more expensive, but not as expensive as what we're faced <coughs> with right now. So it would be some reduction from what we're paying for this coming year. I was going to say there's there's some other things in the transfer station budget like the additional the additional employee that's at the transfer right. station is causing that line to go up, and there's a few other things. I've, I uh, Kevin Kevin was able to get me that budget today. So, but we had added a second person from a safety point of view, mm -hmm. you know, mid year last year. So. Right. Yeah. There's some items in public works, but I'm thinking more <coughs> of the things that we've talked about. You guys have talked about quite a bit is. You know, we've, we've been working on a lot of projects and grants um, to, you know, do hazard mitigation, things like that, climate resiliency, also looking at economic development, community development around complete streets. So things that are just, things that aren't necessarily being budgeted or looked at now, but are, we're looking at to sort of build capacity around. So, I mean, I mentioned the, we have an MVP grant that we have applied for, so, um, you know, that's got a lot of, exciting uh, things and including the Kellner Drive culvert, but that, um, you know, those kinds of things we've been adding to the budget. I'm not sure, you know, where, you know, kind of what the thoughts are for sustaining that. The grant application right now requires almost a $200,000 match. So, but it's the stuff that we've been really needing to do for a number of years. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm resiliency. Like I said, part of it, the reason why this is surfacing is because there's just no federal money. But I would anticipate more federal money after 2010. So we're going to be in a position with a lot of our design and engineering done that we will have some shovel-ready projects. So when there is an infrastructure money available, um, we should be able to get some. So I, I don't want to make it sound like it's totally depressing. Right now, they're just, you know, for the last three years, there hasn't been any money. And that's why all of a sudden, usually we can match the state, federal, and so you just, it never really surfaces because we get it done. But mm -hmm. the, without the federal money, we're just using the state money. And that's where the match is, we're having to make up the difference in match. How? <coughs> So, Brenda, how close are we? How many more budget? I, I realize the school budgets aren't in, but uh, for the most part, what's the? I suppose I better come over to a microphone. Um, the school budgets. You're right. The school budgets aren't in, so uh, hard to assess anything. But I have probably 85 percent of the budgets um, outside of that. Just want to go through, flush them all out, and then I can get your uh, books put together and and get something in your hands so you can start looking. Mm -hmm. uh, out of curiosity, just about when do you ex expect? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'll put you on the spot. I, I would hope that by next week. Um, I really hope to have them for you tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was too much of a push. I wouldn't have had time to really look at things. Uh, so hopefully early next week, I would have budget books to all of you.
so that you can start reviewing and doing what you need to do to, to keep the process moving. And, and then maybe what we ought to do is what we've basically done in the past, which is to take those 20 budgets that are, the, for example, the finance committee's uh, pretty straightforward budgets. Yeah, $500, mm -hmm. we take those and go through those first, get them out of the way. Uh, we end up, you asked last year, do we need to do spend the time on this? And we spent two hours doing it. So uh, just get it done and out of the way. Uh, if that's that makes sense. Uh, and then the other budgets that are missing stuff, uh, should we take take a baseball bat? Should I walk around and start beating on people? No, no, I, th I think we're doing, we're doing really, really quite well. No, we um, are. We are. Uh, can, we, we, can we just start with the ones, that, the simple ones that are done, instead of waiting for the whole thing to be done? No, I, I really, I, I'm, not, I'm not asking to have it all done, but I want to have the majority of those in the booklet for you so that we're not passing around papers all the time. Um, and, and we're doing, like I said, we're doing quite well, and I, and I have most of them. It's just a matter of finishing up a few things, so. But you've got, you probably have 95% of those, the small ones, and, 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 and even yeah. if we don't have some, uh, we can, you know, push the selectmen to say, yeah, do that, that's well, part 100 of it, bucks I, for this. Brenda, when I met with Brenda today, um, the FERCOG assessment hasn't come in. Diana says we haven't gotten that one yet. So that, and that is, the nurse is not, at, you know, 100%. We, we plugged something in for the nurse, not knowing really what it's totally mm -hmm. going right. to be. And, and we don't have the, I mean, I don't know what the forgot assessment is. We don't, we haven't, I haven't heard anything. So, right. well, and there's, there's, and there's things like that that Brenda, you know, there's not. Well, there's a few other budgets, too, that we can't finish, like the wastewater treatment plant. We have no idea what our debt service is going to be. We don't even know what the yeah, amount the is going is to be. The thing is that we're not yeah. going so, to know next week either. So. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I think we probably can take those small items and you know, we can go through those. And, and if there are two or three uh, that we don't have, completed by next week, then there are two or three that won't be completed. Anymore. But they're small dollars, and, you know, it's set yeah, it, you know. Except, well, the assessment, the per assessment is But, that's, but that's there's not nothing one, we can do about that one, so That's one help. that we yeah. typically don't yeah. uh, worry about. do right, right away. Brenda, would you feel comfortable with that? I understand what you're saying as far as trying to get as much as you can together so you can actually take a good look at that. Right. Well, and I want to be able to get you your books with most everything in them. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I said, I'll have them for you early next week. That's what you were... That would be fine. Yeah. We have to decide when we're going to meet. <laughs> May I suggest Mondays? Yes. <laughs> Right We've here. got a, it's a personnel board that's meeting on Monday. Every Monday? No, but next Monday. Oh, okay. Uh, so, so what time is their meeting? 6 or 6.30. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so outside of that, because I mean, they meet once a month, we could probably meet Mondays quite often, right? We out of four weeks. Does Monday work for you, Brenda? Sure. The question, does it work for everybody here? Works for me. Works for Every me. other Monday it works. What? Or I could be here at 7. I know those I can't matters, but I'm only one out of seven, right? Yeah, but you're but important. You're, you're important to us. True. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get that one. <laughs> Wasn't listening. Uh, either we can meet at seven. I don't have a problem with that. Oh, it's getting close to bedtime. Mm -hmm. It sure does. But if we can, if we can keep it, you know, it still gives us two hours, two and a half hours, three hours. Three well, hours is too long. That's too long. I'm really two hours is too long. Two, two, two hours is. The, it if you're starting at seven, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it might keep us on track better, right? 
start a little late? <laughs> I start at 6 and I roll in at 7. I was going to see you at 6.30 because usually yeah. the first half hour is kind of preliminary blowing minutes and things like that. And anyway. that's only, I, it's only every other week for me. It's just me. So 6:30. We can't do it. We can't do it next Monday. But uh, what day next week? Thursday. You can't do Thursday. I can't do, Thursday. I can't do Tuesday or Wednesday. Thir Thursdays are can be tough for me. I don't know in advance. It's part of the babysitting. So do we wait an additional week and do it the following no. Monday? No. Yes. Oh, that's right. Can't. <laughs> I mean, you guys can meet on, on Tuesday. I won't be able to attend the Tuesday meetings. If there's an occasional Tuesday meeting and somebody else will take the minutes, that's okay. I don't have a problem we, with that. I would be upset if I miss every meeting. We could, we could, we could tape it and have you look at the tape, and then you could take the I'm not there. doing that for you. <laughs> nice try. <laughs> that's where I draw the line. <laughs> I didn't have homework. That was a good idea, Skip. <laughs> He's pleased with himself. No. <laughs> um, what time is your personnel committee meeting? Scheduled? Either six or six thirty. I don't. We usually meet six. Well, so, what could you meet next week at seven? For, uh, and go start going over the little ones. Next meet next yeah Monday next at week seven. on Monday, which yeah. would be the thirteenth. Uh, I suspect that personnel mm -hmm. committee meeting will be longer than that. Longer than that. Yeah. Um, okay. Figure if we add things to it. Okay. Well, I don't believe we'll be able to do the fall on Monday, will we? Because it's Martin Luther King Day. Right. right. So yeah, we talked so about that. Can't do that. But you can meet on the 27th. Right? Well, what about Thursday, then? I mean, we, you know, as much as. Did you, mm -hmm. Do you have a problem with Thursday, or am I the only one that has a problem with Thursday? I like on Thursdays, but I can watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so the other one, I suppose, is Wednesday. Uh, I can't do Wednesday. <laughs> Next week, we can't do that. There's, there's a schedule to meet Thursday. What's that? There's a uh, What's the early meeting. Meeting. Yeah. On Thursday? Like seven, maybe seven, eight. Monday at like 4. Allison, are you available the 21st, which is a Tuesday? No. No. All right. I'm sorry about that schedule. No, no, that's, I was just curious. We mm -hmm. can't do Thursday. What about the 22nd Wednesday? I am not available the 22nd. After the 22nd, I'm available every other Wednesday. Yeah, we do, we will, at least we have the past couple of years, pretty much three out of the four, three out of the four weeks, January, February, March. How about Saturday at the Polish Club? <laughs> well, that could be. At noon time. At noon. Right, there you go. We've got to make the whole, the whole crew. That could be an interesting meeting. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so somebody pick a date. Let's take it. Monday. Next Monday. What time? Monday after personnel committee. This this coming Monday. Is that well, why not seven? Oh, or before? You seven. talked about before. You could start your finance committee at seven, and then Skip, you could just slide in as soon as the fine, uh, personnel is over. <coughs> Could the personnel committee meet at 5 30? Perhaps that could be arranged as well. Yeah, we can maybe we could meet at something like yet. 7. Yeah. It hasn't been posted. Somebody yet, has so trouble getting it. I know it doesn't. Yeah, you know, so it hasn't been posted yet. So Monday at 7? Thanks. Does that meet with everyone's? Mm -hmm. that works. And then we'll go late. in there. That'll be a few minutes late, but yeah, okay. Uh, I have a tabletop uh, meeting up at. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It's official. But I can come down afterwards, so I can. This get coming Monday is the 13th. Great. So we're going to find one of your buddies and send them down.
I might. Well, if we do it at seven, this would I might. It would be helpful to have off. some. My fourth Monday. In the beginning, to be able to connect. Yeah, a little bit. I'm. I'm just saying. So, so with the solar Monday the, the 13th at uh, 7 o'clock. Okay. Yes. Just a thought. Yes. Monday the 13th. Okay. So we'll do Monday the 13th at 7 o'clock. Yeah, Monday the 13th at 7. <clears throat> and then, I'm sorry not to be, but are you going to then go to Monday the 27th next? Just so we I don't can know. Have we'll worry about it. Okay. All right. Just thought you want to put it down. There's a lot of meetings going on. Can we meet on a holiday? No, no, we can't. Twenty seven. Can't do it. No, it's illegal. You're not supposed to have meet on a holiday. She's asking about the twenty seventh, two weeks away. No, I know. I was just. But you can't meet. But no, we can't meet one day on the holiday. Should we schedule though? Do you guys want to pick a day for that? that next week in between that isn't a Monday for that holiday week. I can't come Tuesday or Wednesday, Julie can't come Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Renna can't do Wednesday. I could do Wednesday oh, yeah. if we did it before uh, from 5 to 6.30 well, or something. Say you, you, can't you can't do, do it at all. Uh, no. What about Tuesday then? We're going to get stuck in there anyways. Tuesday the 21st. Somebody else take minutes that day. You may not be able to make the meeting. Well, no, I'll, I'll be back. So I'll be here. Okay. What time? Six? Will you be back by then, Brenda? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'm flying back in the night before, so I'll be, oh, okay. I'll be back here for, for Tuesday. So that's Tuesday the 21st, and 6 o'clock? I won't be attending that meeting, but I can make <coughs> minutes from the previous meeting available and somebody else will just. Actually, if you could ship the minutes off to Pat. All right. When I email them, I email them to the whole group. Right. Yeah. So That'd she should good. receive them, but I like to give you guys a chance to, you know, if well, you kind of review. your we name would, or something. We would then review them and, and uh, yeah. If you if give me edits ahead of time, I can give you guys the final, the final version right there. So that was the, the benefit of it, but that, either way is fine. I'm still going to send them to you. You can just delete them if you don't want to read them Since before the meeting. Up, that's, right. that's what you said. PDF? They're all uh, going to be Word documents when I send them unfinished. Word doesn't like me. Really? Okay. I'll make it a PDF for you. you tell me how to I can do PDF. that. It's a good idea. All right. And then You're on a Mac. I can, I can do that. Word doesn't want to communicate. You know, I write them on a Mac on Word. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll accommodate. We'll make him a PDF. So then, do you want to set the meeting for the next week then? And then from there? For the 27th? That's a Monday? I'm actually out of town Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that week. And Thursday, so you're, you're uh, that week? Thursday I probably won't go in though, so I could do Thursday that week. What time on 27th? Um, they're just Six. decide th saying maybe the thirtieth. Allison, can you do the thirtieth? Yes. So it looks like you can do the thirtieth, maybe. The thirtieth. Yeah. You so, don't know whether you can though. No, I I can do it. It's just you know it's like have to rush home afterwards. Oh, that'll work perfect, perfect. perfect then. We'll get the meeting done in the thirtieth, John. <laughs> Thursday the thirtieth. What time? Six. Six. Okay, we, was, we can stop. We can stop there. <laughs> you know, Perfect. That's, that's really impressive. Okay. <laughs> I hope somebody wrote these down because I, I did. did. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else that we need 13th to? Twenty-first yeah. to thirty. Thirteenth, seven o'clock. The twenty-first and the thirtieth, six o'clock. So that, right. say, say that again. 13th, Monday, 7 o'clock, the 21st and the 30th, so that would be a Tuesday and a Thursday, mm -hmm. would be 6 o'clock. Right. That's what we all agreed upon. Okay. okay. Good work, team. Who, who posts them? <laughs> Di does Diana post them? Yeah. Oh, Pat. Pat posts them. Yeah. I, so I just said.
Got a question over here. Yes. Since, since it's early in the budget season, I'll, I'll start repeating from last year. Going into the third year now with no commitment for OPEP for both the uh, senior center budget and the EMS budget, in which case the end result is Waitley and um, Sunland are. No, we talked about the OPEP. We on. talked about the OPEP budget at SCEMS. Is it going there, to be the, included the, this year? We, well, there is. Oh, go ahead. No, we just haven't. We have. It will be included this year, but we just. We don't know what amount we're going to Exactly. There's because a line item towns, for it. Just all it's three towns right have a different amount that they're putting ahead. And actually, Waitley and Sunderland put more away than we do. So uh, how about the senior center? The uh, um, senior I director. I don't know. That is, that's that's I, a multiple I town think, as well. I think you'll have a, a difficult time getting that board of oversight to approve it that when so they're it's having it's the difficulty approving a maintenance budget that's reasonable. It's the same people that are in the scams. So you can go beat, beat on them. That's your job. Here. Do we have OPEP line items in our, in our local non-regional budgets? Not in the individual budgets, but there's a, a number. There's an OPEP number. Not much, but there has been an OPEP okay. number. For like just town wide open number. Right, town wide, yes. Now, how, how is the, um, how is that accomplished with the um, sewer employees? Is that being assessed to the sewer district? Is there a percentage being assessed? It has, it has not been at this point. At this All point. we've done is just, right, we've, we've just It's just done. been an employee based overall. So the ones we have that are, that are, have multiple inputs, it would be the uh, senior director and the uh, EMS at this point. Right, well, and, and if you're going to do that, wastewater treatment should be included in that too. Well, right? You know, that's why I just yeah. asked. Yeah, no, I'm, so I'm saying it's right now it's been, it's the total amount that has been put in for the town has been put in through the general fund. So. Right. <clears throat> But the other difference is you have two other towns that will never have to have to correct. Ready up. Correct. That's Don't worry. With those We're other talking yeah. about it. It's just that we need Deerfield will have to pay more than we more what we're paying now. We actually paid less towards OPEP than the other two towns, from my understanding. So I understand that, but the, so end the agreement on how much we should budget is. You know, we'll be discussed this coming Thursday or the next Thursday, the 16th. We're going to have further discussion. I understand what you're saying, but the, if we don't pay more, we're going to lose a lot more, is what I'm saying. Okay, so it's time to get on the horse. This is the third year and needs to be done this year. You know, and, I, and I'm pressing it because the EMS needs to get it inside of their budgets. I agree with you. I, you know, I've been talking about OPEP for how many years? You don't have to hear me talk about it. Refresh my, uh, refresh me a little bit. Uh, Deerfield approves the budget for the EMS and the other towns at what position they have to approve the money that goes into it. Everybody approves it, yes, right. individually. So if one town does not approve it, what happens? They have a year to. Uh, they have to resign and uh, a year in advance and pay the freight of whatever uh, it is. There you go. So at this point in time, if Deerfield approves a budget with the OPEB in there and Waitley and Sunland do not approve it, then they have to take the option of resigning out. It's not that, Bruce. It's we don't pay as much. We are going to be paying much more in OPEB for the EMS than Sunderland and Waitley because they already pay a higher rate of OPEP. We pay a drop in the bucket OPEP. Right, but if we so are losing... So if we add it to our budget, it's going to be at a much higher rate for the EMS than any of the other Deerfield employees, and that is what is at issue here. I would love us to all fund it correctly, but no one wants to fund it correctly. So, so It's not anything to do with the other towns. It's the town of Deerfield that does right. not want to meet its OPEB obligations. 
Well, I think those need the numbers need to be brought forward because it's foolish to take on that liability for forever, you might say, uh, and ha get no money because we're going to have to fund it sooner or later anyway. So all we're doing is postponing it. And so the longer we postpone it, the more we're going to lose. I, I absolutely agree with you. So it's I just so that we, as, as the Finance Committee and the Select Board, we have to agree on a higher OPEP commitment. Then what, is, then what is that number? And I don't expect to answer that right now. I'm just saying that that's what we need to know what that number is. That's what we need to discuss is what uh, is the correct well, Bruce, Bruce wants to know what the number is, but ask you to do that. I want to know where you're going to get the money from. Well, that well, too. But, you know, sooner or later we have to get the money. I, yeah, that, absolutely. We have not that, we marched forward on it because the town of Deerfield has not wanted to commit. So I, that's I'm one. just telling you it's not anything to do with scams or Sunderland or waiting. It is the town of Deerfield unwilling to pay a realistic OPEB Amount. Then if it's on our shoulders, shame on us if we don't do yes, it. Yes, it is 100% okay. your field And that is also one of the reasons I asked last year for the consideration for the select board to ask for two budgets from all these departments. One was a level services and one was a level budget with the repercussions. Because it's time people started to separate what they want and what they need. We have been increasing services every year. It's time to look look at hard, look hard and fast at these services because we have millions and millions of dollars facing us in the uh, in the near future in our face for all these projects that need need to be done. Forget about wants, and nobody wants to make the hard cuts and say, "Look at do we really need what we have." That's why I suggested last year asking for uh, level budgets as well as level services. But evidently from the conversation that was not asked this year. No, we asked for level services. Exactly. What was the recommendation by the uh, town accountant for a percentage of the payroll for that? Well, I don't. I don't think there is any. I think they came up with a recommendation set for each hundred dollars. You'd have to put in so many dollars, and we should find out what that is because whatever that number is, all the separate departments that we have that are multi-town departments should turn around, and put it in there, regardless. If we know how much it is, that should go in there. Well, the thing is, John, it's, no one wants to fund it because to fund it ad adequately is a huge amount of money. And so that will require us to either. The thing is, cut, if we're going to do it, we should do it for else. the multi town departments. It doesn't have to be done for our town right now, but you still have to do it for the multi town departments. EMS, when you're running an $800,000 payroll, you have to do something with it. Senior center is not that big of a budget. So if it costs another three thousand dollars, so it costs that. But I think it's got to be put in there. And if we don't put it in, then like Bruce says, we're remiss in our duties. We're not looking for the long run. We're saying we'll take care of it later. Well, take care of it later means down at their feet, you take it in the shorts again. That's what it means. You're preaching to the choir, John. I have been talking about OPEP for multiple years. You know that. Okay, but if you're starting somewhere, you have to start with the multi-town departments. I, I agree. It, and, I, and if we got to step up their plate, we step up their plate this year. It, and I'm not pointing the finger at you, Carolyn. I'm bringing this out for open discussion since it is on TV. Well, Because I know it's not your decision alone. Maybe the thing to do is, even though I think it's pretty clear we're probably not going to fully fund it, but what if we did fully fund it, what would that, that number be? And I guess well, that's the, the question. Is, that, there is no well, that's the question I asked. Yes. What? Yeah. How much There's does it no, cost per hundred dollars? There are all kind of, the recommendations for fully funding OPEB are all over the. They're all over the place. Yeah. I mean, Brenda probably knows more about what it, what seems to be like what the other towns are funding across the state as a given for OPEB. Do you know? 
Goodness. Would. Well, they're all funding, most of them, any of them that I know of are funding much more than the town of Deerfield. But, you know, Pittsfield might be putting in $600,000 a year, you know, but they're a big city. So, okay. So what is Waitley and Sunlin putting in in relation? I, I do not I mean, how did they develop can, a number you, for themselves? I, I can't remember offhand from the, the meeting we had was in, um, you know, before the holidays. So I can't remember exactly, but I, I the problem is Sunderland and, and Waitley are both funding their OPEP at a higher rate than we are, or more, or whatever. So, we, and we pay 50% of, roughly 50% of the EMS budget. So, if we commit to an OPEP similar to Sunderland and Whaley, that's a huge increase to the town of I'm just, just putting it out there that if you want the EMS budget to go up in relation to OPEP, what we are going to pay don't forget, they have eight hundred thousand dollars in reserve right now too. I'm, I'm, I know. I'm, I'm that just, goes back on the track. Right the problem is, like I said, there isn't a recommended mm -hmm. amount anywhere. I mean, the town's all the, there, really but isn't. what we're doing is a drop in the bucket. So, I, my, I have always been after every one of you and the select board, everybody, to say we need to do more, but. What's my recommendation? I don't really have a recommendation because it's all over the place. And so what we need to do is just do as much as we can do and, and, and figure out how we can cover it. Well, right now we're dumping uh, approximately 22% of uh, the wages that we pay for our employees into the retirement system. In addition to the 9% that to 11 percent that they're putting in so you know that's one of the things that uh, well we had talked about you you know the reason why the way we had set it up is is if we had a really bad year we could use the OPED money to offset some of our medical insurance costs from what I understand the way we set it mm -hmm. up so putting the money in the fund is that. not necessarily locking up money that we'll never see or never have the ability to use in an emergency like the, like the 2008 recession where all, everything are you know people just stop driving you know buying cars so our excise tax everything that we project projected dropped out so to cover our health insurance we could hit the OPEB account so putting more money into the OPEB account is smart from long-term financial move, but also it gives us a little bit of a cushion should we have a huge recession like we did in the eight, you know, 2008, and we have a huge, still huge uh, medical insurance bill. We could hit that up for that year or two, whatever, to get us through without laying off all kinds of people and teachers and all kinds of stuff. So that is a positive thing about the OPEB account. And so it's not like we're just throwing away money, locking it up, and never seeing it. And I never said you did. All I'm saying is we, yeah. we, need, to, we need to pick up what we're losing. Yes. And I, I agree 100%. I've already brought it up. We've talked about it. But it, it's, it's on us to decide what we can afford. And that will go, in, the EMS will support it. Nobody's against it. We're the ones that are hesitant or I'm hesitant to commit us to any number because how, what's the impact of the overall budget. So if we can discuss it, I'm totally open to the number. Whatever number, I'll bring it to the EMS. Well, I, I, you keep leaning on Waitley, and uh, are they doing it on a per employee, or are they doing it on a percentage, or how I, are I, they doing it? I honestly can't remember. All I know is that they're doing more than we are. Could you find that out? Yes. I will get the information. That's my question. Because yeah. Um, maybe actually we'll have maybe Diana can call down there and find out exactly what we're going to send them to. Yeah, sure. Because to be quite honest with you, the way I feel right now, this is the third year of kicking this around and losing it. When if, if, if those budgets come forward, I would reject them as not being fully fully funded. Bruce, it's fine. We, there's you know we don't have to do an ultimatum. The hesitation was 
from the town of Deerfield. It's shame, it's shame on us. We yeah. should shame on us. I, we hear what you're saying, Kristen. In fact, Zach, I think last year we talked about you know, reviewing the indirect costs for scams, and basically that's what you're saying, is we need to pick this up in the indirect costs. Each year that we don't... I don't care how it's picked it. up. It yeah, just needs it to be picked up. Back. And it, I'm not quite sure why it matters what contribution rate they're doing, because it's our system that we're talking about. So well, it's, it was to be fair, you know, Whatever. But it's our indirect costs, and, and, so it's and that, our costs. And our indirect costs, we need to reflect what, what, they, what they are paying. I mean, I, I've, I'll stick my head into this one, and, and you know, somebody can chop it off. That like, uh, I've been concerned about the numbers that I've seen from the consultant that the town has. Uh, concerned, positive. Concer or concerned that the uh, the OPEB numbers uh, don't make a lot of sense. Well, that's. I mean, they do, they're just too, the they're problems. frankly too high. That's why people are, yeah. towns are all over the place. Sure. But they're contributing yeah. because these numbers are just yeah. pulled out of the air. Yeah, and that's you try it. to analyze them. You can't analyze them. And there's no consistent an, an analysis of it. We we are stable employer, employers. Our people stay on until, <clears> and then at 10, our turnover is very low. So we, we I mean, for us, it's the, Analysis is hokey, I think, but we're not putting enough away, and it, and it's that few years that we have to worry about, and it's way down the line. So it's you know I know it's hard to convince people to pay, but I think we need to put away more, and and that would be my only recommendation is we need to put away more. All right, so we, we've kind of beat that one and we've managed to spend an hour here tonight uh, and we've got a meeting coming up next week so could I'll make a motion to adjourn is that what you're looking for <laughs> oh, I wouldn't no it wasn't that's okay we have a motion to adjourn is there a second yes. second second all those in favor aye, aye. aye.